The final W is uh, Windows Workflow Foundation. Processes directly in our assemblies. Okay, now this is one thing you have to be a little cautious about. Usually when I talk about workflow, first thing people think about is SharePoint, right? Or BizTalk, you know, something that is this other tool that does workflow kinds of things. This ain't really that directly. There's some integration. Things are getting more and more connected. But this is an API which is trying to solve the same general problems, but in a slightly different perspective. Okay? The motivation behind workflow is we can build into our .NET programs the business logic we are trying to model. So just think about any kind of business process you're trying to play around with. Someone's trying to purchase an order. Right? Think of all the things you might have to model. You know, look up to see if there's an item left in stock. If so, check their credit. If that works out OK, place the order and send them an email. Okay? Well, historically, if we were going to kind of model that business process just in code, we would just have to write a whole bunch of code. Right? And that's fine, but the problem then is that we have this document which is nothing more than code. And that cannot be easily shown to non-programmers, like subject matter experts. Right? So then we have to start to worry about using things like Visio to model out the business process. And then I got two documents. So here's the way it looks. Here's the way it functions. If I change this, I got to change this. Okay? So what workflow says is we can design the business processes in a declarative manner using things called activities. So when you have a brand new workflow project, you're going to have on your designer things that look very similar to what you might find in a user interface application, like ASP.NET or WPF or Windows Forms. But what you're actually looking at are going to be these things we call activities. Okay. So when you're working with Windows Workflow, you're going to notice that it kind of feels different from the get-go. Because usually we just start a new project by writing reams of code. Okay? <laughs> but now what we're able to do is to design the actual workflow of the application. And these are those activities I was talking about. Okay? Each one of these activities can be massively tweaked right on the designer. Okay, and there are tons of activities. There are activities to do things on, you know, in parallel. Right? There are activities that will call web services or WCF services. There are activities where you can just put custom code. You can do branches and loops. You can set up a lot of these little things in rule files, which allow you to like, define the rules in an external file. So you can change them on the fly at runtime. Okay? So as you're designing this entire workflow, and again, there are plenty of different activities you can plop on here. As you're building this, you know, very similar to a UI program, you are actually getting member variables declared in your code to drive all this. Now, workflow is not just a pretty designer that will generate some code for you. Okay, that's just one part of workflow. The other big thing about the workflow programming model is once you've designed the workflow and you've added real code to do real things, like you know, talk to that database, update that email account, or whatever you have to do, then there are this huge set of services that are layered on top of the API. Right? And these are called the core services of workflow. You can also build and register custom services with the workflow runtime engine. So for example, there is a whole API for doing workflow persistence. So if you have a long running workflow, and here's the short answer, if your workflow entails any level, level of human interaction, you care about persistence. Like maybe you say, in this step of my workflow, I have to get approval from that manager who's on vacation for four months. <laughs> right? You could take your workflow and persist it. And the default implementation of the persistence API will store it inside of a database. Later, you can read it back out into memory and then continue on your workflow. Right? So the persistence API is for any long running workflow. And again, typically it means that you're trying to work with people. Okay? We also have a really awesome tracking and instrumentation API. 
So you can bake right into your workflow tons of different tracing and instrumentation pieces. Right? We have another part which is for transactions. And again, I'm not talking literally a database transaction necessarily. I just mean a collection of activities that have to function atomically. Okay? And we also have things for doing thread scheduling, which is another part of the core services. Okay? So once you have built up your workflow, so this is kind of similar to WCF. I got one part of the puzzle, which is just here's my workflow. Well, then I have to write some code to actually execute my workflow. And a workflow can be executed by anything. So you could imagine this situation. Maybe you have an ASP.NET program. When the user clicks a button and goes back to your web server, it's going to start a workflow. Okay? Maybe you have a desktop program dis deployed as a smart client. When I click that button, it's going to start a workflow. You could also have things like, here's my web service or my WCF service. And if you call this method, I start a workflow. All right? So really, anything can host this same generalized workflow problem. And as you can see, the code is very straightforward. Now, I'm actually out of time for the demos here, but uh, that's fine. It wasn't that, uh, that crazy elaborate. So that kind of wraps up the two-hour talk here. Just want to obviously point out that we got classes on all this stuff. <laughs> So if any of you folks are interested in hearing real details and doing real labs, you know, we have different classes that will talk about all these things. Um, I know a lot of you have been through our classes. All of these assume you have knowledge equivalent to complete C sharp or complete VB. Right? So no intro stuff. We're just going to kind of hit the ground running. Right?